Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Global Compliance Panel. I'd like to welcome uh, everyone to our live webinar on 21 CFR Part 11, a complete manual for compliance success. Well, I'm David, your host for today, and on behalf of Global Compliance Panel team, I would like to say thank you to everyone for taking part in today's webinar. Um, I'm really honored to introduce to you our presenter for today, Mr. Newich. Now, Yasmin Newich serves a major medical device OEM as a senior compliance quality engineer and 21 CFR Part 11 subject matter expert. He has also served ASQ section as the chair for two consecutive terms, has taught quality certification exam prep course, completed numerous software validation, and obtained over 25 different certifications in leadership, quality, software validation, and more. And Mr. Newich has conducted webinars on this and other topics with high attendance and appreciation. And we re we're really honored to have someone as um, distinguished as Mr. Newich with us to present today's webinar. And now, before we begin, I would like to inform all participants of the program outline for today's webinar. Uh, this webinar is for four hours duration. First, Yasmin will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas that would be covered, and he will then share with you his presentation. We would also like to inform you that at the end of two hours, we'll have a brief uh, question and question ask session where a new lines will be open. You can ask your question directly to Yasmin, and then we'll have a 10 minutes break, and then we'll resume again. Now, if for any reason you get logged out of the training session or the telephone teleconference, uh, I request you to follow the same procedure to join in again. Uh, now that we're all ready to start, I now request uh, Mr. Newich to take it from here. Yasmin? Thank you, David. Good day to all, David, you included and to all participants. I would like to welcome you to the webinar on 21 CFR Part 11, Complete Manual for Compliance Success. Um, as David mentioned, my name is Yasmin Nuhic, and um, due to the uh, time constraints that we have when it comes to presenting entire material, I would like to encourage you to um, ask questions as, as they come to you by typing them in the chat uh, box on the uh, WebEx screen, and uh, Dave will make sure that those questions get routed to me at the break, and then uh, we'll attempt to answer them as many as we can, if not all of them. At the same time, uh, I would like to thank David for the kind introduction, and uh, invite anyone else who wants to learn more about me to visit my LinkedIn profile, and where uh, you can see some of the uh, past work and current experiences that I have. Once again, welcome to the, um, to the webinar, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. One thing that I would like to ask you from the very beginning is that throughout the presentation today, we will have a number of polling questions. Um, they are not scientific polls by any means. It's more just for me to learn about the audience and to understand where to focus more time and where to spend less time on when it comes to the material. So I will highly encourage you and please and ask you to participate in those polling questions and to respond to them as they as they come up on the screen. Um, with that, I would like to go ahead and start with the agenda for today. And uh, agenda is short, even though the program is long. The first part we're going to talk about is a 21 CFR Part 11 overview and introduction. And this is not necessarily a detailed introduction about the regulation itself or the line-by-line -line, um, presentation of the regulation. It's more about how this regulation applies to us when I say us, people that choose to comply or choose to enforce electronic records and electronic signatures, as well as some other elements that, uh, that are important to understand and know about 21 CFR Part 11 in order to be able to master the remaining of the agenda. And that is pretty much auditing for Part 11, 21 CFR compliance, meaning how do you go about conducting internal and external audits for compliance, audit trails. And uh, as you will see, that definitely warrants, in, in, um, uh, this topic definitely warrants almost a presentation webinar by itself. However, however, I'm going to try to share with you all the important things about it and some hands-on things and some how-to things so that you can literally just take them from the presentation and implement in your organization day one, starting tomorrow. And then we're going to final, finish up with the preparation and hosting of the FDA inspection, how to go about preparing, preparing and hosting for the FDA inspection where 21 CFR is either the scope of the 
inspection or just a part of the scope. And um, if we manage our time right, there will be plenty of time left for the uh, Q&A at the end. And again, I would like to encourage you to ask questions as we go along or write questions as we go along and ask questions at the end. With that, the very first part we're going to talk about again is a 21 CFR Part 11 Overview Introduction. Talk a little bit about timeline and where the regulation came from, definitions, and uh, this is going to be probably the, the part that sounds slow and tedious. However, it is important for us to make sure that we establish the terms and understand each other because everything else from that point on depends of, of our full understanding and being on the same page when it comes to definitions. Subparts and subsections of the regulation, again, we're not going to get deep into them. However, we will talk about them and which ones to focus on depends where are you in the stage of the, of the compliance and what are you trying to comply with. Part 11 versus other regulations, securities, including policies, physical, logical securities that you need to have in place, advantages and challenges when it comes to 21 CFR Part 11 regulation, training, options for non-compliance, and please know it's a question mark. Is there even an option? And we'll talk about that. What ifs? What if we choose not to comply or choose to comply with the regulation? What may what consequences we might have. And then finally, we're going to finish this, this section with the a statement of certification um, that is expected to be completed and submit, submitted to the FDA should you choose to comply with 21 CFR Part 11 and exchange information electronically between the regulatory body and, and your business. So um, very first poll questions. Um, just want to make sure you, where you stand on the familiarity with the Part 11 regulation. Um, of course, you heard it by now. However, have you heard it before this webinar about this 21 CFR Part 11 regulation? Second is, are you aware of the regulation and its elements? In other words, at least you read it and understood it. Have you ever a chance to be audited or audit against the regulation? Or you might be serving as a subject matter expert in your organization or, um, and, uh, or at large for 21 CFR Part 11. Again, I would like to encourage you and ask you to, uh, to respond to these polls, polling questions as they, as they pop up. Yes, we'll just give another 10 seconds. Okay. Um, yes, we have results here. Great. So it appears that vast majority is a uh, aware of the regulation and its elements, which is the That's great. probably the best place to start. And then uh, also, it is this is this part of the presentation is targeted for those that they are aware of the regulation, they understand the elements maybe have some working knowledge, but definitely never been exposed to auditing to it. So I believe you will benefit the most uh, from the following slides. And then again, I would like to encourage you to, as the, as the questions come up to in your head or as you think of anything, feel free to um, type up your question to the chat box so we can address them at the break. Thank you for replying on your poll. And, um, the objective for the for the for this part of the webinar is to obtain knowledge and understanding of the 21 CFR Part 11, how it applies to you, as well as to be advised of the consequences which may result in failing to comply with this regulation should it be should be should it apply to your organization. With that, I want to share with you again timeline, but most importantly. I'm going to share with you some of the overlapping um, elements between 21 CFR Part 11 and Part 820 and CGLP and some other regulations. The main thing is that the rule defines the criteria under which agency considers an agency being any regulatory agency uh, within the United States. 
electronic records and electronic signatures and handwritten signatures executed to electronic records to be acceptable for regulatory purposes. In other words, it regulates the ways of how you can communicate with the agencies electronically instead of making copies and sending them hard copies. The rule also meets the FDA obligation under the Government Paperwork Elimination Act. I guess everybody's going green, including the government. And associated procedures to define terms and conditions, such as policies and regulations required to ensure the electronic records and signatures are, are as reliable and appropriate to, for the purpose um, in question. I would like to sh point out to you this quote that this, this says, it says, all Power 11 systems must be validated, meaning computer validation, software validation. Yet not all validated systems must be Power 11 compliant.